Hey, what's everybody? Welcome back. Talking a little bit about the changes for the vampire skill line, um, whether or not it will be, I guess to say, of benefit for PvP, or will it be relegated to just PvE and for people who are primarily looking uh, for role playing? And starting and starting off, um, one thing I will say is that the abilities for vampire do feel uh, very lackluster. I think certain abilities will be useful to certain classes, um, but for the most part, right off the bat, I feel that Vampire will be kind of useless, especially because there's going to be a lot of damage for next patch. But and just just literally talking about some of the abilities, or so just looking at them right now. So we're doing a little bit of leveling. leveling. Your main spammable is going to be here, Eviscerate. It's literally. It's literally a reskin of. Uh oh. It's literally going to be a reskin of Burning Embers. As you can see, it literally has. Did I not take it off? I didn't. It literally has the exact same animation as Burning Embers, the little swipe that you do. And we'll just take a look at that. Kind of go here to the class abilities. Right, so uh, looking at Burning Embers, you can see it's it's literally the exact same animation, except one does fire damage, right? Oh, and then the other one, it's literally the same, the same animation, as you can see. You've got a stun, which is literally the same animation as Breath of Life. You can actually perform the stun, has like a little shimmer effect to it, you should be able to see it right there. Um, it's literally the same animation as someone who casts Breath of Light. Like, literally, literally the same animation. Nothing new. Um, Vampiric Drain uh, is another very expensive ability um, that deals damage as well as healing you per second. And then kind of like the old... Kind of like the old uh, Vamp Drain. Uh, excuse me, wrong one. Kind of like the old Vamp Drain. You can either gain Ultimate... Or the other one restores a portion of the stamina, especially with the changes to um, Battle Spirit for the next patch, where they're reducing all healing by 60%. The healing percent for this ability is just literally going to get obliterated, and you're going to be healing for like 200 damage a tick, and that's before mitigation, um, since the it's and it's of course the healing is based off of your missing HP. So it's kind of like for those troll tanks that run around with like 60k HP. It heals for a percentage of your missing HP. Very useless in my opinion. And of course the other one just generates alt. Um, there is another ability here with Mesmerize, which is basically your main form of stun. Which basically I showed you, which is like the Breath of Life animation as you can see. Um, and so it stuns in like a little bit of a cone. And then one either snares and then the other one um, then becomes like an AOE all around you. One ability that I think probably will gain some usefulness on certain classes, primarily on uh, either Stamina Nightblade, I, I would say primarily on people who, who like to snipe. Uh, primarily because one, they sit so far back um, that they, they gain the best benefit from utilizing um, Simmering Frenzy. And it says the bonus cost increases the longer it remains toggled. And so basically it says allow your monstrous appetite to take hold, increasing your weapons and spell damage by 600, 630. And then this particular morph, as, you're, as you allow it to stay up longer, then of course you start to gain a 10% bonus up to 100%. So it maxes out at 1260. You might gain some sort of use for it really quickly on a bomber build. Uh, on a Magicka Nightblade Bomber build, but I would say primarily it would be on someone who's playing very far away, i.e. snipe builds, who even if once they secure the kill or don't, can just basically roll dodge, cloak, and then, then detoggle, because you can put the actual ability on, and your HP will drain. This is basically what it looks like. As you can see, my HP drains, but it doesn't kill you. So that's that's pr primarily the class that you're going to see making useful making use of it would be would be a class that's um like like i said a nightblade it's primarily a sniping nightblade because on a like on a melee magicka build um the last thing you want to do is literally lower your own hp because most of those builds are typically very glass cannon with very low hp and they're just literally they're trying to get in do as much damage burst pop the roll 
get Vicious Death to proc, um, and then get out. The last thing I'm sure that they're going to want to do is sit there draining their health for 1,700 every 20, every second um, while, this, while this ability is toggled just for the extra damage. Could it be useful in other ways? Maybe, but I find it to be very clunky um, to utilize in PvP. I really don't think it's going to be all that useful. Uh, another ability, of course, is, uh, the, is the same thing as Mist. Basically, it hasn't changed except for the animation looks um, a little different, as you can see here. So, it's not really like the old Mist form. Um, and then, of course, the little circle there um, deals damage and it heals you for a portion of the damage. The other morph does the exact same thing, which is, which is remove snares um, and apply major expedition. This, of course, allows you to um, deal damage. Uh, it's kind of like the other one, which I think did, did like poison damage, and now it deals um, magic damage. Very, very lackluster, not much thought put into it. Um, and of course, Arterial Burst is your main spammable, uh, deals up to 50% more based on your missing HP. Um, and of course, in this ability, while you're under 50%, will always be a crit. Kind of okay, but to literally go vamp for the extra damage that you're going to take, the extra fire damage that you're going to take, the increase in cost, uh, because the higher your, the higher your you go in, um, as you can see right here, depending upon what stage you're in, you take your health recovery at stage four is zero. Um, your flame damage is you take an extra twenty percent flame damage. You're going to take extra damage from Dawnbreaker, um, from anything basically in the skill line from the Fighters Guild. So I really don't find it worth it for these very, very, very lackluster abilities. The alt is okay. Um, it deals some damage. Uh, we can show it right here, kind of showcase it right here. So I'll, I'll waste some of my, my resources. And basically, it's literally the exact same thing as the old one. It's basically Bat Swarm, except it doesn't heal, except it doesn't um, heal for the damage. And it's literally the exact same animation as um, as the the necromancer the necromancer ability. It's it's literally a reskin. They just literally took the exact same animation. It does the exact same um, D like the animation that draws you out. It's literally took the exact same animations for like multiple abilities, which is pretty sad. Really, really, really lazy. Um, really, really lazy develop develop work, um, especially for the you know I, I understand that it is free but you know quality quality counts in a game that after you know five six years of development is still having um, problems with lag still having problems um, with imbalances still having problems with skill delay and it really shows in the quality of the work that Zenimax puts out and, and when they do stuff that's good I'd say hey you did a good job like when I, like for example when I talked about um, the the quest in Ellsworth, the artwork, amazing. But for what I see here, this is just indicative of just a lot of laziness um, and not really a lot of thought and went into the animations. The skills, very mediocre. I would say the only real good good ability, and it's very situational, would be, would be utilizing, um, like I said, Simmering Frenzy, the stun, literally, it's the same animation um, of Breath of Life. You can see that. The other ability, uh, what is it called? Um, Arteria Burst, literally the exact same animation as Searing Strike. And of course, your ultimate, literally the exact same animation as the Necromancer Coloss, uh, not the Coloss, uh, when they turn into the big uh, go Goliath, when they turn into the big Goliath. It's literally the exact same animation. So you see a lot of lazy work, and it shows. a lot. It shows in the, the, the lackluster abilities. Um, while it... it, it it may, you know, one, the one thing I know this will be very, very trolly, kind of like people who utilize the uh, the Necromancer Goliath Ultimate. It's like people that just literally just don't want to die. And this is basically Goliath 2.0, except you'll actually take um, a bit more damage. Similar to the Goliath Ultimate, it does heal you for a uh, percentage of all of the damage that you do. Whereas the Goliath Ultimate has that little AoE that it does. And it heals you for a percentage of, of that damage. I believe it's 100% of the damage, but in PvP, of course, it's 50%. And some of the other abilities, very disappointing. Um, not really a lot. I think the passive is currently bugged. Actually, excuse me. It's only in stage four. So you only gain the unnatural movement where you kind of go invisible and gain the um, the sprint reduction. 
when you're uh, 50 when you're at, at stage four because you really get nothing as you can see from the passive um, which I kind of, which I find kind of weird and kind of lackluster. It does force you to go into stage four, and there aren't really a lot of great rewards for being a stage four vampire, because your abilities are just going. Well, your vampire abilities will be cheaper, yes, but then your regular abilities will continue to go up in cost. On a class like, for example, Magic DK, I just don't see it being worth, especially because your ultimates end up. Um, like your normal ultimates will cost more. Yes, your vampire um, ultimate will cost less, but it's a, it's it's really lackluster, especially on a magic DK that moves very slowly. Um, you're not really going to make that great of a use out of it. In my opinion, I really don't find it all. I don't really don't find it all that great. Um, I really had hoped for something better, um, but I'm not surprised at what what I see. Um, from the studio at this point it's just basically you know to me it seems more maybe role play friendly for people who like to role play in the game um but in terms of pve even in terms of pve i don't find any of these abilities that would be serve any sort of usefulness except like i said for maybe uh, blood frenzy one of the morphs where maybe uh, as long as the healer has rolling hots on you you'll be able to keep it up for extra damage but it's a lot of it's a lot of damage to take per second, seventeen hundred and twenty eight HP damage per second, which is which is a lot of damage for the extra six hundred um, weapon damage or spell damage. Some people might be able to make use out of it. I really don't find it to be something that's to go crazy about for PvP. It's just my opinion. Um, as a long time PvPer, I, I was hoping for a lot more, but unfortunately, this is kind of what we got. I'll be putting out some other content talking about the werewolf. The werewolf is amazing. Uh, for PvP, for those who are looking for cho for the choice of what should I go werewolf or should I go vampire, without a doubt, I would recommend you to go werewolf for next patch. If you're looking to run one of those one of these type of builds for PvP, I would definitely recommend werewolf, which I'll be talking about in my next video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Take care and God bless.